Okay, we're back live inside theCUBE. This is our flagship telecast, theCUBE, from SiliconAngle.tv, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, talk to all the thought leaders, uh, smartest people in the room we could find, CEOs, entrepreneurs, developers, uh, bloggers, you name it, we'll, we'll cover it and get, bring all that to you, extracting the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Mike Clayco, who's the CEO of Brocade, a CUBE alum. Mike, welcome back. Thank you very much, we Dave. We had you on here last year, and... Uh, I recall. EMC Worlds, big, big event, keeps getting bigger. Cloud, big data, transformation, all great messaging. Um, how you doing? Where do you guys fit into all this? Well, how are we doing? Uh, well, we're doing great, thank you for asking. Uh, where do we fit is the fact that the, everything that's being talked around, whether it's big data, or a virtualized enterprise, or all the different um, things around uh, analytics, you got to move data from point A to point B, and the only way you can really do that is through a network, and so that's what we build. We're a pure network player from that standpoint. And the other thing is you have to understand how the data is moved. So our heritage is all around storage networking. So we can apply that storage networking to the big analytics around, as well as uh, the big data, the big analytics, as well as cloud computing. So we're in a pretty good inflection point, in a great spot right now. Yeah, we've dubbed, uh, others have too, I guess, the 2012 is the year of the cloud, but it's real. I mean, we just did a survey on Wikibon, and it's very clear that, that people don't see cloud as a buzzword anymore. You know, the whole Larry Ellison rant. I mean, it's, it's real, it's happening. You see that in your customer base? We are. We actually are seeing it in, in a variety of different uh, deployments. There are, the, uh, the service provider marketplace right now is actually bifurcating into two. One is, it's looking at the bit pipes, how do you get lots of bits down the pipe very rapidly, and the other one is the value-added services. And that value-added services is hosting applications, and you see some of the companies here, they're all hosting. So that area is growing rapidly. So that's one, and then the second is inside the uh, private companies, everybody's trying to figure out, how do I create all these virtualized machines and then move them throughout my organization, and so that's another huge opportunity, that's a private cloud, if you will. I think what's going to be the big, you know, holy grail in the future is, how do I take this private cloud and this public cloud and then be able to seamlessly move between the two, and those technologies are just around the corner. Yeah, and I think, I think Mike, I wonder your take on this, I think two years ago people were like, that's not our primary strategy, we don't believe it. I think now when you talk to customers, they actually believe they can get there. Do you agree with that, or is that what you're seeing? Oh, I absolutely agree okay. with it. In fact, you know, I look at, the, uh, I look at my company as just an example, and uh, right now 45% of all my applications are hosted in the cloud. Now, my employees wouldn't know that. My customers wouldn't know that, nor should they worry about that. Mm. In fact, it's the ability to access this, this information anywhere is what's got people very excited. So you guys have transformed internally, or you're starting to transform internally. And, uh, we have, we've done about 80% of our applications are virtualized, and 45% of what's remaining, or of uh, the other applications are actually hosted in the cloud. Eating your own dog food? <laughs> well, <laughs> we were at Sapphire last week, you know, it's a European company, yep. they're very staid, they said, well, we prefer to say drinking your own champagne. So that's a, I'm not sure about drinking your own champagne, <laughs> but we just look at it, it's just pragmatic business right. applications for us. Right. Mike, Mike, so Joe Tucci gave his keynote, he said, you know, the debate between private and public cloud is silly. And that's a direct quote from Joe Tucci, mainly uh, emphasizing the point that there's many clouds, depending upon, you know, public and private, so there's no one winner. Uh, and and we, we pretty much believe in that. But with cloud, and there's the IT implications, which you can see saying, oh, I, cloud is IT, big data is for the business transformation, you know, analytics, et cetera. What's the role of the networking fabric play in this evolution? Because it's evolving so fast, certainly on the big data side, it's real nascent still, but on cloud, it's rapidly evolving where you have hybrid, you have private, a variety of different clouds, and data is the gravity, as Pat Gelsinger said. So, how do you guys uh, talk about that fabric in the network, in the cloud? Well, in fact, uh, one of the things that our customers have told us, which is usually a pretty good indication, but instead of us telling them, is that a fabric architecture will be the foundation of any other cloud. It provides infinite elasticity. So, uh, you know, you look at the fact that you're a fabric for storage, and now everybody takes that as common ground. You have a fabric, you actually have a network for storage, and now what we're seeing is you're having a fabric or a network on the whole idea of how you do all your server connectivity. 80 to 90 percent of all the traffic in a data center in the next few years is going to move east-west between servers. 
not through up and down, which used to be the traditional north-south. And because of that, you have to actually have this fabric in place if you're going to go ahead and take advantage of the of the promise the cloud architecture can bring. And so, you need a fabric. Tell about the customer, you've had customers are telling you about this fabric. What are some of the uh, successes you're having with the customers in that regard? Well, we actually, uh, and we had an earnings call last week, and what we've said is, we have about 550 production customers right now that have put in ethernet fabrics. You know, we have, we have more than 50,000 customers just with EMC alone, that have put in storage area networks, the fabrics there. And then when you look at all the other, so we have hundreds of thousands there. So now what we're starting to see is we're doubling every quarter, just doubling and doubling and doubling, and because they see the value of this. And first application that we're seeing that, that folks are simple virtualization. The ability to seamlessly move and drag and drop an application anywhere within the data center. They need a large sphere of mobility, and that's what an Ethernet fabric gives them. Yeah, now you guys have had a long relationship with EMC. It's I remember great. when you guys sort of essentially made the market for SAN switches. You know, EMC at the time was selling big monolithic boxes. Plug the EMC, to its credit, embraced the storage network. You know, it could have been a great equalizer, but they didn't fight it. They embraced it. You know, your partnership started, and then we just saw I don't know, a month or so ago. You guys are part of that VSpecs announcement. We are. You must have been happy about that. We were. We're very happy. In fact, we recognize that. Uh, actually, EMC and, and us together and a variety of other partners have recognized that best of breed, when you put it together, is actually best for the customer. And so, you take the best servers, the best storage, um, and the best networking technology. Uh, EMC, uh, with its variety of offerings that they have, is best storage. Uh, and you can see the whole uh, the lineup card that they have. From our standpoint, we have a, a, a large variety of networking products. More importantly, we have a very robust Ethernet fabric technology. It's our seventh generation of silicon that we're building this upon, so we're not new to it. And then there's a lot of technology going around the Intel server space on who's best, and there's a lot of leapfrogging going on. The nice part of it, what the customer can do is they can actually bifurcate these all together, and by the time they're ready to implement, they can get the best breed, put it together, and it'll work. So talk more about Ethernet, right? I mean, you guys, Obviously known for your fiber channel you know, stack, but you made some acquisitions, you know, talking about, what'd you say, and seventh generation, was that? What seventh generation silicon. So, so talk a little bit more about the ethernet uptake and, and you know, that part of your strategy. Well, it's, a, it's an enormous market, uh, so you have to understand when, when we went into the marketplace, one of the things we looked at is we really believed that virtualization was going to be mainstay across all sizes of enterprises, as well as when we, we took a look at, at the, the marketplace um, from um, the growth opportunities for us, we needed to have uh, an answer uh, for what we call the virtualized enterprise, virtualization, cloud-based computing. And that said, by definition, you need to be able to participate in the Ethernet world. And 10 gig, 100 gig, uh, not just the basic connectivity, but the next generation. So when we look at our fastest growth area, it's all around 10 gig. We're now the second largest 100 gig producer in the world in terms of shipment of product. And as soon as I shipped 100 gig, I had a customer come to me and said, when can I expect a terabit? So there's an infinite demand out there at this point in time, but if you're going to participate in cloud architecture, you have to participate in the Ethernet side. So you're talking about earlier about the flattening of the network. What's, what's driving that? And then I got to follow up. Well, I think the biggest thing that's driving it right now is just the large sphere of mobility on virtual machines. You used to be able to come up to a rack, count the number of machines in a rack, and say, oh, there's 20 machines in that rack. I got 20 instances. You walk up to the rack now, you may have 400 machines in there. And the ability to move these seamlessly throughout a data center, great tools by VMware, tremendous tools. But, but we're scaling to the point where customers want to move between hundreds of thousands of VMs. So you need a large flat network to go ahead and do that seamlessly because going across networks it still is a challenge. Going within a network is relatively straightforward. And, and your vision is that interconnect between that server to server communication is, is Ethernet, right? It, it is going to be a combination of Ethernet and fiber channel. Mm -hmm. The reason it has to be a little bit of both is it's actually relatively straightforward and there's and VMware's done tr a tremendous job around the server, uh, moving the server apps. Moving that storage behind it, you got to be able to keep the storage and the servers in sync in the data center and then when you start stretching them outside the data center, when, how do you keep FCIP and MPLS in sync? technologies required there. So I think it's a combination of both. So, so server to server driving that, you know, that that's it's the driving it. piece. Yeah. Uh, Ethernet and then and then fiber channel at the back end for the storage. And then 
And then, but but Ethernet versus InfiniBand, you guys are betting on Ethernet, right? We're betting on Ethernet. Yeah. We have. We've I mean, you know we made that position uh, that position known. I mean, we're already you know at 100 gig technology and the price points that are on the, ride that, that curve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we're Mike, just going to ride the curve. Mike, there. so one of the big themes here at EMC World and throughout all the different Cube up, um, events we've covered is acceleration. Acceleration of, of operating cycles, acceleration of acquiring customers, acceleration of product development. Um, so this acceleration theme, you know, startups accelerating, all this stuff's happening. So one of the key concerns around developers and, and enterprises is they want to build an application environment that can accelerate fast. So the go-to-market for these these kinds of plans are shortening. What do what are you guys doing at the network fabric level to enable that acceleration? Is it the virtualization component? And what specifically do you guys look at that as if you're enabling this robust top yeah. of the stack, if you will? John, it's a great question. In fact, you know, it's all about speed at the end of the day. Uh, you know, we can come up with technologies, but you got to be able to uh, to absorb that technology in an organization or a partner has to develop. We actually, in our Ethernet fabrics, have developed an open. There's a, an API that you can actually redirect frames out to take advantage of security applications or dedupe applications or encryption or a variety of other applications because there is going to be so many great technologies. Technologies that haven't even been invented have to be accounted or planned for going forward and so we provide that in our the way that our, our products are designed that they can they can actually bridge out, go into take advantage of an application and come back in at, at basically line rate. Yeah, and we talked to a lot of customers, and one of the big concerns we hear, among other things, is they don't want to foreclose future benefits by going with an existing platform. So to them, a, a table stakes now is the enablement, not to foreclose that. Are you hearing the same thing? Foreclosing uh, new opportunities that may, the business can build on. You know, I, what I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of customers right now is, uh, we as vendors, a lot of vendors, we've put so much complexity into the marketplace, uh, and frankly, there's a lot of compliance that had to be uh, accounted for, but if we can simplify that complexity. You know, a year ago, we, we used to list the top five areas that a CIO was very, I mean, it just said, these are frontal lobe, things I worry about every day. What popped into the not top five this year is access to skilled labor. Now you think about that, and we talk in, the, in Americas all the time about the number of unemployed people. Well, the fact is we still can't find enough skilled people, so we can do two things. We can train a lot more people, or we can simplify the products that you don't need management Abstract decisions. the complexities away. Exactly, so we're going to the latter. We're making it very simple to use technologies, building in diagnosis into the product sets and so forth. So we're just trying to take that complexity out so you don't even have to deal with it. So okay, so let's take that thread a little bit, uh, step forward. You're here at EMC, where you're probably doing a lot of customer meetings and you know, schmoozing, um, doing a lot of biz dev, normal stuff that CEOs do. Um, what's, what's the conversation like with you, with customers? When you go to them and say, hey, about brocade, what's, what's the kind of high level conversation do you have with other, your peers, other, other C-level executives? Uh, you know, for the most part, I, I would probably say that it's if you if you grouped it in the categories one is strategy so where are you going you know how do you play in the cloud what do you you know where do you think that uh, virtualization is going to go ahead and fit how do you fit into the uh, uh, the analytics side of the business and so forth you know what's next and so they're always looking for what's next because sometimes the the high sea level execs they're making a decision for something that may not implement for a year and a half or two years in that because they have to go ahead and, yeah. and look farther ahead. So what we do is we have those kind of discussions and then I can compare and contrast what we're doing around the world. So let's talk about some of the product things that Brocade's doing. So like we're seeing some examples in the marketplace where different approaches, purpose-built hardware and certain solutions are get traction and grow rapidly. VCE is one we've been tracking for a long time. Dave called it, called it out or first and when he predicted that that would be an explosion. But that's also a multi-vendor environment. Not, there's no one solution that fits all anymore. How do you guys as a company uh, navigate those waters of, hey, I'm a multi-vendor, but you still have to integrate in and abstract yeah. away the complexity, which might require more of the one vendor, but still playing nicely with the interoperability I piece. think that's a that's a great point. I mean, this is the whole V-Spec thing that we came up with uh, with EMC, is you build the blueprints, you test them out. Uh, we have uh, an enormous lab at our disposal. EMC has an enormous lab at their disposal. Many customers don't want to be in the lab business. What they want to do is they want to be in the deployment of applications. They want to go ahead and solve a problem. And so what we'll do is build a blueprint, test the solution, and literally hand it to a partner and say, these are Prefab the Prefab solutions. Already and that's what, I mean, the, the VNX, which we covered, the VNX launch. I mean, very simple channel yep. product, 
but they just packaged it so it's cleaner. <laughs> we're doing the same thing, and we're in partnership with them. To yeah, do that. so the V-Specs was something you guys were working on? We're with them. working with them. In fact, our VDX product line, which is our Ethernet fabric, as well as our ICX product, <coughs> ICX product line, which is our standard Ethernet uh, connectivity products, they are part of that offering also. So Mike, I wonder if we talk about, come back to Ethernet a little bit. I mean, the strategy is pretty clear. You guys wanted to diversify, get into the growth market. It's huge, as you said. Um, now, uh, talk about what you, what you did initially. I presume what you did is you, you took your relationships with your, your best SAN customers, and then obviously you're going to sell Ethernet to those guys. How do you go, first of all, is that accurate? And how do you go beyond that? How do you broaden beyond that? Is that a channel play? And, and talk about that a little bit, if you well, will. Well, um, actually, that would have been the obvious thing to do. We weren't that obvious, I think. What we ended up doing is finding where our products fit best, and because there are more competitors in that space. In the SAN space, we're at 70% market share, and so we know where the customers are, we know what the value props are. So what we try to do is provide differentiation. So we have some very good niches in the service provider marketplace. However, it's in certain segments on the edges, uh, in some of the uh, content distribution networks, uh, some of the internet exchanges and so forth. So very, very high growth areas that have unique requirements that we build very fast race cars for that, for that marketplace. And then we take a look at some of the other marketplaces, the unique requirements that an educational institution will have. Uh, and so where we're going there. Some of the things that we do for the government, very, very unique. Instead of just general purpose, cover the, cover the world with everything, now we're branching a little bit because we've got our strategies in place there and now what we're doing is implementing a, a fairly robust two-tier network of distributors and then taking those products, building them specifically for the channel that they can go out to their partners. Okay, and then um, Mike, my last question for you is around sort of vision and, and brand. You know, what do you want the brand to stand for? What's the, what's the bumper sticker vision for our audience? Uh, we are a pure networking company. I mean, we're really good at what we do. And so we can not only move applications, but we can move data from point A to point B uh, with, uh, what, 100% quality guaranteed uh, all the time. So, I mean, we're a high quality uh, networking company that is uh, committed to uh, help companies grow into their either the cloud architecture or what I call the virtual enterprise. Yeah, so you guys are really playing on drafting on the trends of cloud. You know, we talked a little bit about big data, you know, driving some of the, the other networking trends. Obviously, getting tighter with, with EMC, which is good to see, you know, give customers choice. We love choice, we love choice competition is great. here at theCUBE. Choice Cube. is great. Mike, thanks very much for coming Always on Always great to see you again. Great to see you. Nice to see you, thanks David. Very much. John, nice to see you. see you again. Okay, right. CEO Brocade, we are, uh, be right back at the short break. <laughs>